I cannot believe that I had the opportunity to interview Dr. Maya Angelou, the Dr. Angelou for Essence Magazine. This was uh, an amazing experience. And typically when I'm interviewing, it's a, it's a dialogue, but I wanted those eight, nine minutes that we had to be her minutes. I wanted her to talk. I wanted it to be about her. I just wanted to soak up all of the history and all the wisdom and just be in her presence. So there's no way that I could keep this moment to myself. So I wanted to just share with you guys uh, the interview and enjoy. 50 years ago, mm -hmm. 1963, I, I was living between Egypt and, and Ghana. Oh, wow. And uh, it was a, an amazing time mm -hmm. because I was a journalist. And so I was able to get the the uh, wires, the information, as soon as it happened anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. in the newspaper office, we got the with the in information. Mm -hmm. And so I felt I was there at the march on Washington. Wow. <laughs> and um, a number of African-American uh, uh, patriots mm -hmm. were... Uh, we walked around the American Embassy. Oh, wow. In uh, uh, supporting mm -hmm. the March on Washington. Wow. It was amazing because at one point, one of the soldiers, uh, security soldiers in the embassy, mm -hmm. came down to take the, 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 uh, the flag down. Okay. And they were nervous because of this crowd of Arabs and blacks and all of that walking around. Sure. And so they almost let the flag drop. Ooh. And Miss Bates, the same people who were marching against the flag, ran to pick it up. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. And what I saw then was we were really great Americans. Yes. Trying to make our country better. We were not anti-American. Yes, ma'am. You see? Yes. Yes. You make me think of it of that time. Uh, Dr. Du Bois died around that same time. Mm hmm And, uh, oh, it was an amazing. And Malcolm X came to Ghana. I guess he came to Ghana during that same period. Because he was to die not soon after that. Right. Right. And so how has it impacted the work that you do? Like what are some of the messages that, you know, you took and that you would, that you continue to share? Well, I realized then, and maybe for the first time, that people live in direct relation to the heroes and sheroes we have. Mm. It's always and in always. And being out of my country made me more clearly an American. And yes. clearly a proud of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and Fannie Lou Hamer and uh, 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 Harriet Tubman and, and W.B. made me much more aware of the men and women who had paid and were paying for me, for me to have a life with some dignity. Wow. The dignity which was denied me on the, on the, uh, on this auction block. Yes. Was turned to me by those men and women. Yes. The, so when I came home, I came home with the desire to write the African-American story, one woman's American story. Yes. And through it to talk about how we all have survived. Mm. I started with I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. Yes. 1968. I wrote it in 68 and 69. Mm. And since then, I've written 33 books. Books and cookbooks and 
Yes. Autobiographies and essays. All kinds of wondrous things. Thank you. Yes. All the same, this is what we are like. This is what we've come through. Some horrors and some paradisical days. Yeah. And yes. we've been loved. Yes. Which is the most amazing piece of information you can give anyone. Mm-hmm. Is to say you have been loved. People have loved us. Wow. And I guess that would be one of the important messages yes. that you would, you know, that you would want to, that, that people need to kind of keep top of mind. I kind of, but must keep in mind. Must keep in mind. Yes, ma'am. My position is that one person loving one person can is stronger than a whole nation hating you. Mm-hmm. Has more impact. And so whether one looks at Paul Robeson or James Baldwin or James Weldon Johnson or Billy Holiday, mm-hmm. and look at the whole history and they say, my goodness, gracious, when a larger society is telling me, pointing its funky finger in my face saying you're nothing. Here are people who say, I don't know, you're wonderful, you're just what you're supposed to be. There's a phrase from a 19th century folk song which a black man spoke with the woman he loved. He said, the woman I love is fat and chocolate to the bone. And every time she shakes, some skinny woman loses her own. Wow. Yes, exactly. 